Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Kumuda with my teammates uh, Sharon, Shiv, and Raghava DRS. Uh, we are team Musketers, and our project is uh, zero shot text to image generation for uh, housing floor plans. So we all know that the uh, floor plans are like uh, scale uh, diagrams, which represent the um, relationship between uh, small spaces like uh, rooms, yard, kitchen. So on in a um, in a house. So uh, this kind of uh, floor plans are very much important for uh, interior designers to design a home and uh, for uh, uh, real estate agents to sell a property. And uh, even for the architects, uh, engineers, and pro builders, it would be very much helpful for the construction or renovation of a space. So these kind of uh, users can. Um, utilize our model in this way. That is um, on entering the text description uh, as shown in the slide, that is the house has one floor, the first floor will be having one yard, one kitchen and so on. Our model will be able to generate an image like this. So with the it will generate an annotated image, which, which is more visual and uh, which, which can be understood more when compared to the text description. Next slide. So uh, we uh, gathered uh, data from Zenodo.org. Uh, the, uh, so the website provided us an um, uh, image data set, which consisted, of, uh, consisted about uh, 5,000 images in uh, SVG format. This is the original SVG uh, image we can see at the left. And uh, this is the uh, SVG file format we are able to see. Um, next slide. So as part of uh, image pre-processing, uh, we have uh, taken the original uh, image that is a two-dimensional image, um, uh, which, uh, which is in the left side. So uh, we uh, pre-processed this. So what we did is we gave a different color for different spaces in this floor plan. So if you can see in the right side, we, uh, we have something, some small spaces represented in pink color, which represents the bedroom and green color, which represents the yard. So these all annotations were performed as part of image pre-processing. Next slide. So the, uh, so the data set which we got had only the image data set. So we were supposed to perform the passing of the SVG file to get the text description. So on performing the text pre-processing, we were able to uh, create a text description like, for example, um, this kind of image, which had two bedrooms, one living room and a yard, we were able to uh, create a description like the house as one floor. The first floor has one yard, one kitchen, two bedrooms and one other room. So this was uh, uh, part of uh, text pre-processing. Next slide. So uh, the data set had the floor plan images for uh, more than uh, one category that is like uh, for one floors or two floors and even for the three floors. But we simplify uh, to simplify our problem. We consider only the one floor images for our modeling purpose. So here comes the model architecture. So uh, for the modeling that is uh, we are performing the variational autoencoder training as well as DALI training. So for both of this, we are uh, performing a train test split. We are uh, 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 using a 0.1% point one of uh, data set for the validation and the rest for the training. So the generated images as well as the text pairs were saved as a new data set and fed to the variational autoencoder in the beginning. and once the training and validation is performed and the VAE model was saved, that is in the uh, weights and biases. And uh, then for the DALI training, we fed the data set as well as the VAE model as an input, perform the uh, training and then the validation. And at the uh, end, we, we saved the DALI model also in VAN B. 
And at the time of inference, we are taking the latest DALI model from Van B and uh, utilizing in a streamlit. Uh, uh, so uh, the thing is, we are uh, using streamlit package uh, to uh, create a simple UI uh, to uh, showcase the inference. So in this case, we are just using the DALI model and the text description as an input from the user to create or to generate a floor plan image, which you can see at the end here. So, so over to you, Shana. Thanks. So um, in the first step of our training pipeline, we had to train a VAE. So what is a VAE? It is a variational autoencoder and um, what that means is that it is an architecture which has both an encoder and decoder that is trained to learn the representation of an image. And um, what the encoder does is it tries to generate a set of embeddings for a particular image to represent what the image looks like. And then the decoder takes those embeddings and tries to convert it back into the original image. Um, it tries to reconstruct the image. So this VAE aims to minimize the reconstruction error between the um, encoded and decoded data to try to replicate the original data. Next slide. For us in particular, we trained uh, a discrete VAE and uh, we performed a 90-10 train test split and resize the images to 128 by 128 pixels. We also perform some image augmentations, such as um, sweeping the resize of the image. And we trained on um, six epochs and six batch size with a learning rate of um, one to the negative third power. We also use the Atom optimizer. And uh, within our VAE, we used a total of three hidden layers to try to learn the representation of the image. Um, and the resulting image uh, embeddings, which were learned, had a dimension size of 512. Um, the particular loss function that we used to train our VAE was the reconstruction loss, as well as KL divergence loss to reduce that loss as much as possible. And we can see on the images on the right, I show the um, the loss for training as well as the loss during the validation step. And we can see that as um, we're training with more epochs, then uh, the loss is reduced over time. We ran several experiments to train the VAE, which uh, included changing some hyperparameters such as number of epochs and the number of dimensions in the learned image embedding. And uh, we found that um, the more epochs we used, as well as um, with using a higher number of image embedding dimensions, we obtained a better performance, um, resulting in a validation loss of uh, 0 0.009, which was the lowest that we had obtained out of all of our experiments. Next slide. Um, so after training the VAE, we also um, tried to interpret the model as it was training to see uh, what it was learning. So here is a graphical representation of uh, what our VAE was learning over time. So from the left side to the right, um, we're showing uh, snapshots of images that are being reconstructed by the VAE over um, time or as the number of epochs are increasing. And uh, we see the top row of images are the original images, and the bottom row of images are the reconstructions that are decoded by the VAE. And we can see that in the first, in the beginning of the epochs, um, we always see is just some blurry gray smudged images that don't really look anything like the original. And uh, over time, we can see that our model is learning things such as like the walls and the in the images and the different colors of the rooms. And eventually, near um, the fifth epoch, um, the room does look very similar to the original image. And uh, something we noticed was that uh, as uh, we uh, trained beyond six epochs or so, the quality of the image did not 
improve much further, and that might have been due to um, lack of computing resources uh, on our training uh, process. Next slide. So after training the VAE, we had to go and train a DALI model. And uh, DALI is a, um, it is a publication written by OpenAI, and it's an extension of GPT-3, where um, DALI creates uh, images from text. And um, to summarize DALI, DALI is an autoregressive transformer model built out of decoders, and it uh, accepts concatenated text tokens uh, along with the image embeddings from the VAE earlier to train the transformer autoregressively. And this um, model tries to minimize the cross entropy loss for both the text and image representations when it is learning. Next slide. So as part of the DALI training process, um, we followed a similar image preprocessing step as the VAE, such as resizing the images to 128 by 128. We also performed a 90-10 train test split. And we also did a sweeping resize for image augmentations. Uh, in this case, our best model we trained had uh, trained for five epochs with a batch size of four. We also used the Atom Optimizer and um, uh, set the maximum number of text uh, tokens to 256 tokens. Um, as for the transformer part of Sally, uh, we had used four attention heads and um, also took in the 512 number of image dimensions from the VAE. And the loss function that was learned is um, the same as what was reported in the Dolly research paper, which was a cross entropy loss, which was weighted um, between image and text. And they weighted um, image losses um, seven eighths of the uh, loss, whereas text was one eighth because we care more about learning um, the image in the end rather than the text. And we can also see here we have the training loss and validation loss, which is shown decreasing over time as well. And uh, we ran a few experiments here as well, similarly. Uh, where we um, changed the number of epochs and the number of dimensions which we used. We found that um, using five epochs and the 512 dimensions for the image led to the lowest loss. So that resulted in the best model we had. Next slide. Here is one example of the result of our DALI model. Um, when we input the text, the house has one floor. The first floor has one yard, one kitchen, one living room, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, three hallways, one storage room, and four other rooms. We can see that this image actually does show a lot of those components that were written in the text, such as the five bedrooms, which appear in the pink. We can kind of see um, two of them clearly and three of them a little more faded. We can see one living room in the orange, and um, we can also see other rooms such as the kitchen in blue and um, two dark blue bathrooms as well. So in this example, we can kind of clearly see that um, the model um, generated the correct image given this piece of text. Next slide. Um, here is another example. Yeah, I guess we can just skip these. It was repeated. Okay, so uh... <laughs> Hi, this is Shiv here, and I'll be taking you over the MLOps architecture. So we did not go ahead with any kind of cloud service provider for our MLOps requirement, but rather orchestrated our own pipeline. And this pipeline consists of few components around which I'll be explaining. So we got a Colab Pro account, which helps us to store data as well as run the Python notebook. From there, we push, we use a service called Weight and Biases. So weights and biases actually gives us a kind of wrapper which we can wrap around similar to what SageMaker gives or any other service. And this wrapper helps us to track most of our experiments as well as our visualizations, like create visualization with the dashboard, check our loss, epochs, and every other thing. 
So we track most of our experiments using weights and biases, and we also utilize the repository, which is provided basically an artifactory, which is provided by weights and biases to store our models. Everything is pushed into Git. And then there is a service called Streamlit, which we've configured along with the codes. So what happens is whenever you push any kind of code to GitHub, it will automatically build the whole thing and deploy it down to the app server, which they have. Now, when I say deploy down, it's only the Streamlit file which gets deployed and it utilizes our model, which is available in Weights and Biases, and it takes the latest model. Now, Weights and Biases or VanDB, which we see over here, service provides us with most of the visualization and comparison between multiple experiments. So I'll take you through that in from my browser. Oh, my bad. Okay. So this particular thing, you can see that this is the Kubikasa VAE model, which Shannon just explained. And if you see, we ran three experiments over here and the results of the experiments can be compared. You can just switch on and off whatever you require, like whichever experiment you want to track. This helps us in fine tuning the hyperparameters as well as to maintain a constant flow of information from various developers or various runs of the same notebook so that we can see what changes underwent. And same as the case with DALI, we can see the loss, the validation loss epoch, and you can add multiple other parameters if you feel like. The models are stored in this artifactory over here where you have the latest models along with the previous ones. And Weights and Biases also provides us a direct API to download this model, which is being utilized by Streamlit in order to do the predictions. So that was about Weights and Biases. And then, as I mentioned, there is a framework called Streamlit. And this framework helps us to write simple Python code in order to generate UI components. So there is a transpiler which does this. And using that, we generated this web page wherein you go ahead and type the kind of house you need. And the flow pattern plan will be generated automatically as shown previously by Shannon. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, Raghav, you can take it over from here. Yeah. So let me just tell about the technical difficulty that we faced and uh, uh, later on we'll show you the working demo of it. So as explained by uh, Kumudan and Shannon, uh, we used scalable vector graphics. So the original images were all noisy uh, uh, and uh, to generate these sentences and taking that sentences and creating a vector graphics coloring for that one uh, to get a customer, uh, customized colored images, we faced some difficulty in that. Uh, the then we tried uh, uh, experimenting with StackGAN, but ran into problems executing the samples, whatever we had, whatever we were able to find. Uh, then uh, we identified that the problem scope that we initially picked up uh, was too huge. And when we were trying to see for the overall housing uh, for multiple layers, it, it was proving out to be very difficult. So we had to scale down our uh, original scope to reduce it to only a single floor plan uh, to even get uh, a decent output. So the major contributor for this was uh, the memory usage and the compute, which it was uh, turning out to be a challenge. So we kind of ended up uh, uh, paying for a Collab Pro account, which helped us with some of the compute. So the lessons learned from this one was the generative task requires a lot of data that needs to be processed and uh, the compute resources required is also very huge. And uh, uh, as I said earlier, the scope that we tried to work with was huge. So we had to fine tune our scope to a smaller scope with which we could work on the types of images that we could generate. For this project, uh, we used Agile framework. Uh, we were collaborating uh, with each other on a weekly basis. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, we used to connect as a team at 9 p.m. We used Slack as a uh, medium of our communication uh, for our uh, team collaboration. Uh, we used Git for our uh, project repository and version control. Uh, and the team communication definitely played a huge role uh, in developing this project. The tech stack that we have uh, is uh, the DALI, PyTorch, uh, Matlab, uh, Matplotlib, BangDB, and Streamlit. So input uh, for this one was uh, the housing floor plan images, floor plan test description. Output was uh, 
generated the floor plan image given the desk description. We'll go over that in the demo. So the DL model that we used was uh, VAE and DALI. Uh, tools used were Google Collab Pro, Weights and Biases. Uh, the uh, version control was done in GitHub. So Shannon, uh, do you want to uh, do the walkthrough now? Uh, Raghav Komuda will start with the data gathering part of it, and then it will be taken over by Shannon. So, yeah. so you can share the screen. Uh -huh. So I'll start with the preparation of data. Uh, so here, uh, like I said, we got the data from the zenodo.org, and uh, it consisted of uh, images in SVG format. Um, so we use the package called SVG path tools and num2 words to achieve uh, a generation of text description from SVG file and um, to pa uh, that is uh, to generate annotated image. So this is the package in import. So here, uh, like you have already seen the annotated image. So we had explicitly uh, given uh, different colors for each of the small spaces. Say, for example, um, for the yard, which we get in a floor plan, we used to get a green color. So that kind of uh, uh, explanation or uh, uh, information was previously given, and uh, that was a uh, hard coded here. And uh, this is just a mapping uh, for room ID to room name. So for these kind of uh, names, that is, if it is elevated, the ID given it is uh, 11. So you can come down and see. So these are the IDs given to uh, respective uh, room names. So the, uh, here are like uh, util methods to uh, generate the floor plan description and uh, get the regions. That is uh, in the SVG file, uh, we had something called class and uh, which was given name like uh, space, floor plan or uh, furniture. So based on the name of the class, uh, we, um, uh, like we wrote a method to perform the actions. So this is a sample SVG file, and uh, this is the generated uh, image with the text description uh, representing the floor plan. So the, you can see the SVG file format here. Like I said, um, uh, so a class can have some names. Uh, like class is having a fixed furniture as the name here. So if if it is particular name, uh, we are achieving some kind of steps for the section. So this is the processing section calling the util methods, which we had already gone through. This is a uh, storage of the files. Once we are uh, done with the pre-processing and, uh, yeah, here uh, the generated uh, images and the text descriptions are saved in this location. So here you can see the structure, how we are saving it. So uh, this is the third floor. So uh, uh, this folder will be having the image and associated text description for the floor plan having three floors. So similarly, we have created different folders uh, for one floor and two floors and so on. So in uh, folder uh, here, this says the uh, image that is the annotated image in JPG format and associated text description in the same folder. So this is the way we have uh, structured and stored. Um, and uh, yeah, this is about the data preparation and pre-processing. And now over to you, Shannon. Okay, thank you. I will uh, try to share my screen. Can you see the screen? Not yet. Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, so I will talk over uh, how we train both the VAE and the DALI. Um, we took 
uh, dependency on a package called Dolly PyTorch and leveraged it for um, training VAEs and Dollies in PyTorch. And uh, we also um, leveraged one b as well to um, track our model training pipelines and um, any logging and storing of the models and model checkpoints that we train during this process. So first off, um, after setting up all the imports and connecting to our one b account, um, we loaded the uh, Kubikasa data prep or like pre the prepared data from the previous step that Kumuno was discussing. And then um, we set up all of the hyperparameters which we chose. Um, we used uh, object-oriented programming to create classes for the different arguments that we would need. And um, we had different arguments for both VAE and Dolly, but some were in common. So that's, we created some subclasses for um, arguments that were in common and also set up the parameters for um, the specific VAE um, uh, experiment as well. And um, we also had to create a um, data set subclass from off of PyTorch's data sets because our data set was a text image pair. So we had to go and load all the images and text and uh, create pairs of those um as shown here when in the data set when we get item we return both um the text and an image tensor after doing some pre-processing such as resizing and um converting the images to ensure they are colored and utter resizing uh, additionally we also had to tokenize the the text we use the tokenizer library to convert all of our text tokens to some encoded numerical representation, which is what um, Dolly PyTorch requires to learn um, using Dolly. So um, here's where we created our text image pair data set, and we performed our uh, train test split right over here. We created both a train data set and a validation data set using the um, 90 10 train test split. And uh, we split that randomly using um, the PyTorch random split method. We um, had to then create the two data loaders for both the training and the validation data sets. And we found that in the end, we had um, 3000 images for training and about over 300 for validation. Um, here we created some util methods for just saving checkpoints of the model for both VAE and Dolly. So first off, when we were training the VAE, we used um, the Atom Optimizer and also internally, the uh, discrete VAE method also uses uh, ReLU as the activation functions. We uh, set up all of the parameters for the VAE, which were defined above in our arguments and um, kicked off the one to be um, project run or experiment run. And we also um, had to initialize the discrete VAE that we used and we uh, used, we utilized the GPUs as part of Collab Pro to speed up our training process as well. And here's where we um, set up our Atom optimizer. So um, here is where we begin the actual training loop where uh, we did uh, many batches of um, in training loops over the number of epochs that we defined. So we had to load both the, um, the, the data set which consisted of text and images. In the case of VAE, we only used images to learn the image embeddings and this text part was not used. It is saved for the next step when we train the dolly model. So here is where we uh, gather the reconstruction loss that is generated from the VAE. And then uh, we, after getting those losses, we then um, zero the gradients on the optimizer, um, perform the backwards step to reset all the weights and parameters of the uh, VAE and um, continue on with the training. 
Um, every about every 30 iterations or so as part of our training, we had um, logged out some metadata to uh, weights and biases to kind of track our experiment progress. We um, went and got a bunch of sample images and the reconstructions to see and track how our model was progressing over time. And that was all obtained from um, getting the uh, images from the model. And we also save checkpoints of the models as well, every uh, 30 iterations. And um, after doing some more logging of all of the losses that we get in the training loop, we uh, after we finish that batch, we perform the validation step for um, that particular batch of uh, of for that in that within that particular epoch. So as part of the validation step, we uh, look into our validation data loader and also again load the uh, images that were not trained on. And then we perform the same um, computation to get the reconstruction loss using the train VAE on the validation data sets. And then after that, we uh, continue to log out the, um, the validation losses through 1B so that we can track our uh, validation metrics. So after um, all the training and validation steps are performed, and there, um, then we save the final models through 1B as an artifact. Um, and then this, trend, this finalized trained VAE is then used in the next step when we go and train the DALI model. And here are some of the outputs of um, 1B and our tracking our run history. And we did log out all of the um, training and validation losses as well. So now moving on to um, training the DALI, um, we had defined some um, DALI arguments as well for the hyperparameters DALI needs. And it needs some extra parameters such as the um, number of attention heads and um, the model dimension from earlier. And um, it also has its own set of uh, epochs as batch size and learning rate. So um, here we load the VAE from the previous step. And um, we essentially check, uh, we, we check if the VAE model exists and then we load it and get all the hyperparameters and weights to then instantiate the VAE. After instantiating the VAE, then uh, we also set up all the DALI parameters here, which were defined in the arguments, DALI arguments as above. And we uh, then instantiate the DALI using the VAE that we had trained in the previous step. So after instantiating or initializing the DALI, we're now ready to train it. Uh, we trained using the Atom optimizer for DALI. And um, here we define that in the code. We had defined some optional um, learning rate decay using a scheduler. Uh, but in the end, we uh, did not use that as part of the code. And here we uh, instantiate the 1B um, pipeline run to start tracking our experiment. And um, the code is quite similar to the previous step where we also have a training loop uh, right here. And we again train using the data loader in batches. And we uh, here we are loading both the text and images, and we use both of these, unlike in the previous step where we only used images. And here we pass in both the text and the images to our Dolly instance to return the loss, um, to return the cross entropy loss. And um, here is where we um, perform the backwards. Um, um, adjustment of the weights in the network, as well as um, um, updating our optimizer and zeroing all the gradients. And we then do a bunch of logging to um, 1B here, where we, every uh, 30 iterations or so, we take 
um, we set up the logging to um, show the losses at every training step at that stage. And then we also show some example images as well to um, log out examples of images that were trained during this time in the training process. And uh, similarly, we also have the validation step, which does the same thing. We um, generate our validation loss and we also log that as well. And at the end, after we're done training, then we again save the final model as an artifact in uh, 1B. And here we, um, we logged out all the losses at various epochs and iterations, as well as example images. And we can kind of see the progression of how Dolly also was learning um, the images from going from very um, splotchy images to something that is a bit more like concrete. And at the very end, uh, we save this model as well um, to like our Google Drive as well as to um, 1B. So that is the code walkthrough for our training process. Um, do I hand this back over to Shiv? Yeah, thanks, Shannon. So let me share the screen. So uh, once, like whatever Shannon explained regarding DALI and VA training, once that is done, the WANB has all the models, basically the latest model, which is updated over there in the artifactory. So in order to utilize that as a streamlit application and project it, you know, for common use, we create this application using this framework. So the application generally requires these packages. It requires DALI, WANB, Matplotlib, uh, NumPy, Pandas, Pillow, Torch, Vision, and Torch. So these things are first pre-installed. And then after that, I instantiate the Streamlit application. Now the Streamlit application requires us to set up certain environment variables in order to get the data from WANB. And then we just go ahead defining certain functions. So basically this, this is one of the function for downloading the model and caching it up. The latest model was V5, so we downloaded that. And then we also have some model loading. So this was the inference which was done by Shannon and the inference was taken up over here. Like we, I modified the code a bit in order to load the model. And after loading the model, the process is pretty straightforward. You just have the sentence like whatever sentence. So this actually constructs an input for you and whenever you click a button over here, you get the input, it goes to the generate flow plan. And in case of generate flow plan, you actually go and use the tokenizer in order to tokenize the descriptions and then pass it through generate image over here. So, basic, so basically this will generate the tokens and then DALI will generate the images for you. And then it'll pass it to this generate image thing. And then you have a PNG image. Now this image is being pushed on by Matplotlib onto your screen once it's done. Since we are caching the model download as well as the loading of the model, these blocks don't run every time when the website loads. It, it's just for the first time and then people can go ahead and use it multiple times. So first run might be a bit slow, but then it kind of goes ahead and runs pretty fast as normal. So to demonstrate this entire thing, I would give it over to Raghav who has it open. Raghav, you can take off from here. Yeah, let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah. Okay. This is our uh, streaming publication, which uh, she was uh, uh, talking about. So when it's hosted, we get this application where, and we'll be able to provide any description that we want. And depending on the description, a flow plan will be generated. So let me type in a description. So the description I have given is uh, the house has one floor. One floor has uh, a one yard, one kitchen, one living room, five bedrooms, and one storeway. So when I click on generate the floor plan, uh, the model is gonna take a couple of uh, seconds uh, before it spits out the result. 
I do have something which I had generated a few minutes ago. Let's see. Ah, let's wait for it. As you can see, the model is generated now, and uh, for the input criteria, whatever I had given, it has given some results. So it shows uh, one floor plan with uh, a living room and a couple of bedrooms, yard, and kitchen. So this is uh, the end of our demo. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Raghav, you can...